Hi guys, welcome to the Nevermind Poly podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, hello, welcome on in. If you're listening to this on your audio platforms, hello as well, obviously. Um, I have done content since 2017, and throughout that time, my best friend, Becca, has been by my side, and she's never really wanted to be part of any of it, to be perfectly honest, and so when I sat down with her the other day and done a podcast, I didn't think it would come out the way it did. And I have had to do the most amount of editing I have ever done for a podcast ever. Um, because although I've left some of it in and some of it may be controversial or you may want to cancel me or whatever, it's merely jokes between two friends who've known each other for a very long time. And I need people to understand that because I'm fucking terrified of releasing this podcast. Because people are pretty judgmental pretty quickly. And they don't get to know us and people. Like, like I say, we've been friends for years. And I sat down with my friend Becca to talk all things download Bloodstock festival season. Because festival season is upon us, literally. Um, I'm due to go to fest due to go to Bloodstock next week. And the week after, I'm going to Arc Tangent. So if you are at any of those festivals, come say hello. Um, but we had this conversation about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago we recorded this, and I now really got around to editing it, so I do apologize about that, but, um, my life's been super busy, I'm due to record, uh, later today, uh, with a brilliant, brilliant band, um, called As Everything Unfolds, which I'm really, really looking forward to, um, and obviously, we've had God as an Astronaut recently, we've had Raptors recently, and believe you me when I say I am working tires tire tire tirelessly i can't speak um to get guests booked for this podcast and we have got some incredibly big big names um both in terms of pr companies i'm working with at the moment to try and allow more guests to be on the podcast but also me just going after guests on my own back as well um it's a completely solo venture doing this podcast i have no team around me it's just me so any help, advice, tips, tricks, anything like that, if you're in the industry, if you're in a band and you want to come on the podcast, please do hit me up on my Instagram, uh, which is Nevermind Poly Podcast. I do have a personal Instagram, but I'm not really shouting that out at the moment because I'm kind of taking a break from that kind of scene as I've got enough going on with just this podcast, let alone anything else. So with all that kind of aside, this is my conversation that I had with my friend Becca, my best friend Becca, who I've known since 2014, which is a long last time. We get into how we met, we speak uh, quite a lot about Download Festival, we touch on Bloodstock a little bit, um, and there is just some some real banter in this, and, we, and I really enjoyed it, and I hope she enjoyed it, and I hope she wants to come back on. Uh, just for full clarity as well, there's going to be no video of the actual podcast, because we had to record using the one mic which is in front of me now that I'm speaking into. Um, and again, obviously I had to position it towards her. So it captured her voice and then I just talked louder and the edit levels and such a boring thing you don't need to know about. But anyway, that's why there's no video past this intro that I'm doing. But if you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music, any of your favourite places, then you're not going to need to know that. But if you're watching on YouTube, that's why the video stops also, at the very end of this podcast, I allude to making a second part of the podcast. I say that we're going on a break and we're going to go and do something else while Rebecca had a cigarette. Um, that doesn't happen uh, because the other half of that podcast is unusable. I will say that much. Um, it's completely inappropriate for me to put out, so I'm not going to. If you guys want to hear that, I might do a Patreon, maybe. I've been toying with the idea of Patreon for a little while. Um so if that's something you guys are interested in and want to support, again, it would probably be on the basis of having a Patreon set at a pound. Um, so then obviously people who want to donate and support and help the podcast along, you can do so. If you don't, that's cool. The podcast will always be free. But there we go. I'm just putting that out into the world as well. So uh, this is my conversation with Becca, my best friend since 2014. Um, and by the way, Super confusing for those who don't know. My girlfriend is called Rebecca. My best friend is called Becca. Just to make things super confusing. In any case, listen to this chat. It's hilarious in my opinion. On with the show. Peace. Welcome back, everybody. Um, as you've listened to the intro, introducing Becca to the podcast. Hello. It, <laughs> she, 
She's literally just waved. It's an audio-based platform. You have to talk. Hello. There we go. Um, so we have no real idea what we're going to be talking about today. We're just going to be absolutely winging it. So if we talk some absolute shit, then bear with it, basically. It's going to be shit. It's go- it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're going so, to talk, talk shit. So. so I have had a lot of requests to have you on the podcast. That's, that's, that's quite bizarre. Um, and because you've been around since day one of this whole venture, Ugh. so from the YouTube through to the podcast, through to the second and third YouTube channel we've now have, um, it's been pretty crazy. And yes. so I think it'd be good to get the listeners back to how we met. And I don't know how <laughs> comfortable you are telling everyone this story because it is very funny. Oh, this is, that's a really funny story. Oh God, so hang on a minute. I think we. I have a picture on my phone of the date we met, and I. I, I was going to say it's also just, an audio-based platform. Just, so. just rabble a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So, was it this? If I remember rightly, it's the summer of twenty fifteen. No, it was before that. It before was then, okay. Well before twenty fifteen, it was. Twenty fourteen. I reckon. It was mush against cancer in twenty fourteen in Norwich. There we go. Waterfront. Right, so we we met at Norwich Waterfront. Um, friends. Through uh, through the, your boyfriend and like mutual friends of your boyfriend at, at the time yeah. and you, um, at a charity gig called Mosh Against Cancer, which had um, annotations for an autopsy played, uh, a couple of other bands. I'm pretty certain um, Helen Anderson's band played, if I remember rightly, and they'd done like maybe, covers maybe. and stuff. Open. I, think I, so. I can't quite remember. I but can't quite remember, but I can remember meeting you there. Cause I knew some of your friends. Um, yeah, and it was a very interesting <laughs> conversation that was held because I wasn't. That, so. That was. Yeah, because I think I was like, what? 18? Yeah, so you're. you're, um, you're I'm, like I'm nearly. I'm, I'm about six months off being 30, which is a fucking terrifying yeah, thought. Yeah, I was about 18. And what so. would that make you now? How old are you now? 20? 20... 25. 25. Okay, yeah, so there's, there's about four years, four and a half years between us. And which... I was telling all your friends. Well, you knew you were there that I had. I got my nipples pierced recently, <laughs> and because we are absolute lads on this podcast, and, <laughs> and because like all of you were like a group of lads, and one of your friends was like, "I've never seen nipple piercing." Shout out my friend Dan, <laughs> <laughs> and and I just happened to show you all my nip nips and the piercings, and we've literally been inseparable <laughs> ever since. <laughs> It's it's such a funny dynamic, our friendship. And you know what? I've gone on record on various different platforms, whether it be Instagram, YouTube, whatever. When I was at the you know height of uh, my career, if you can call it a career, um, there was genuine fascination with whether we were like dating I, or whatever I, happened. I, I like, <laughs> and I just want to put it here now. We've that, been never dating. <laughs> that people can be friends with the opposite it's sex sex. sex and it not be a problem. No, I, I, I remember when you first told me about that. And I was like, I think because I never see it that way. No. Like, we've both never seen it It's okay, I'll just, mute, I'll just mute my Instagram, it's fine. Don't that worry, way. it's cool. And then when you were, like, telling me, like, oh, people are asking if we're together. And I'm like, eh? And in my head, I'm like, how? <laughs> like, where are people plugging see, this from? And see, the, the, the Then thing... when you've done your, like, your questions on Instagram and mm. stuff like that, and people were asking, I can't help but find it funny. I think it's In a way, so. It's I think like, it's I'm so like, weird. I can be friends with guys just the same as you can be friends with girls, and there's nothing involved. Absolutely, and for for a little while, we were kind of we had the we had the assumption that our relationship friendship was kind of like you're like my little sister, but I've seen you naked way too many times for that <laughs> to be a thing. So, and again, like people could be like, oh, is it a sexual thing? It's like it's literally no. no, like. You know, believe it or we not, every to... everybody has nipples, and I've just seen yours. That's you all. You just happened to see mine, and then a couple of years later, you become my best friend. It's literally. It's one of them things, isn't it? Like literally, it's, it's so funny. It's it, so I funny. do find it a bit creepy, though. Um, I get that, like obviously putting it on the internet, people will ask questions and stuff like that. But then I'm like, what's it to do with anyone? Um, and stuff like that, and yeah. then I'm also aware of like the other questions you've been asked on your Instagram. Yeah, so I've I've had a few people, um, um, generally just creepy fucking people, 
and you know i i've i've always said like i've always been up for photos beers hugs whatever who with whoever gives a shit about my content but also i'm aware that i'm putting my friends on blast on the internet as well especially with youtube back in the day so it's kind of like Do how did state the word for how, well, well <laughs> As I put it, I never needed to make content when Becca was around because Becca made content for I, me. I remember, I can't remember what year it was. Um, Jesus, was it your second year? So 2017? 2017, 2017. So I started in 2017 you, properly. Your, your first festival will always make me laugh though. Mm. Like always. Like, I don't know how much you've spoke about. I mean, first. I've I've done this story about uh, download twenty sixteen to death. I feel, but I, I feel if you like want to go mean, for I it, we'll, we'll like, go for it. I feel it. like you miss parts when you tell it. Yeah, go on, then, go on. Then. So, we'll we'll, we'll wait, go for just it. Just go for when I told you what you needed to pack. Yeah, yeah. Down, yeah. So down to yeah, a take tea. it from the top. Yeah, go on. Down then. to a tea about two. So this is Becca's rendition of download twenty twenty six. I'm pretty sure if I scroll through our Facebook messages, I'm gonna find that list. I remember you like, what do I need to pack? I was like, I'll write down everything you need to pack. To a fucking tea, like how many pants and everything. And then you pack for a week in Ibiza. Yeah. And <laughs> I've never, like, I know from experiences, because I've done download a lot longer than you have, so that it rains. Just to interject really quickly, I do that really <laughs> awful thing that a lot of people do with their friends and go, I'm having struggle with life, boyfriend, relationships, whatever. I need some advice. And they give you advice. And they give you strict advice not to do. And I just went ahead and just completely... You've done the polar fucking opposite. I'd literally... <laughs> I literally you packed did. for a week in Ibiza instead of a week in Donington Park where everybody knows it rains. It has its own ecosystem. It's fucking mental. It rains. And I remember you... Like, the first two days were fine because it didn't rain. And then it rained. Yeah. The, and... So I remember it distinctly because... Um, so let's, if we can, if you can remember that far back, because it was, Christ, it was a, a long time ago. Um, it was kind of a weird group of people, how we all met. So it was myself, Dan... Uh, and no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, myself, Dan and Johnny, um, who Dylan. went... So I'm going to go through it, how we all met and things. So... Myself and Dan have been best friends for literally all our lives. All our lives have been best friends. Um, and Johnny is someone who I knew from college. And we'll get to Johnny's hilariousness in a minute because he he was a he's a funny man. I love him. Shout out, Johnny, but you're a funny man. Um, and then there was Bex, Terry, James, Jess, if I remember rightly, or something to that effect. And Terry and Johnny knew each other. And me and Terry had previously um, been on a date. I guess, like, we, we, we met through Johnny, like, about three years prior. We went on a little date. Nothing really happened or anything like that. Um, but so it was kind of nice that we knew each other. And then, obviously, Bex came along and everybody. Um, Dylan, which is your um, your wonderful gay best friend. He's amazing. We love Dylan. Shout out, Dylan. And um, we just had a bit... It was a real concoction. Tiago. T oh, shout out our Goodbye. friend Tiago, our little foreigner. Um, and we can say that because he's Portuguese and he knows it's a joke and we love him. It's fine. But we're going to send you back to Portugal one day, mate. <laughs> we'll get you deported. He, he lost. <laughs> Becca's just like, you are going to get cancelled. <laughs> and it's like, it's fine. They know um, it's, it's I fine. remember Tiago losing his glasses and I found them for him. <laughs> yeah. That was interesting. And then um, there was obviously Tara and Baz as well. Yeah. Tara and her friend, her partner at the time. Um, which that was, was a nice group, though. Looking we we, back, we were a, we were a very very mixed group of characters. Yeah, um, that was a good year, though. Um, I remember, like, obviously you. I remember still in your hula hoops at your tent. Oh, sorry. How can we forget Adam? Oh, Adam. Adam, just the tallest man I've ever met, and also he just never slept. Never slept. I I remember arising at my tent at about four a.m. And he just sat there nursing a can of something. I think it was cider or something. And he was just like, looked like he'd just done the, all the drugs in the world. He didn't, but the way his eyes were was just like, I've just it done was, all the drugs. It it's was mad. a good year though. <laughs> Minus you packing for a week in Ibiza. Johnny packing um, the, everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah. Um, it was a good year. and then, But I think my favourite year would be... Oh, 
20, 2017 was a really good year. I want to say that was a, definitely a good year. That was... So um, tw- 2016, just to like finish that and cap that off, was uh, a stressful year, to say the least. Stressful year, to say the least. Um, I had multiple tantrums. And that's the only way I can describe it. I, you I, had I, temper tantrums. You like, had I, f- I full on like have had you know a mental breakdown since. And I, know, I, I called it a breakdown at the time. And I'm like, that's not a mental breakdown. You're having a... A tantrum because you've not packed accordingly. You didn't listen. You didn't listen to your friends. Um, and shout out my friend Dan for being an absolute trooper for dealing with my shit for five days because I was a grumpy fucker. <laughs> Except to... on the Saturday when I got fresh clothes, all clean, everything was good. You washed your feet in Darby's Burger King. I did. That was a that was a particularly low moment when I had to lower my feet into a into a sink basin and wash my toes. In a, in a, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a bad time. Yeah, it was a bad time. Um, but no, twenty seventeen at download was my favorite year. I think twenty eighteen was mine because that was the year I think that everything peaked. What was the year that me and Terry tried to get ice cream? <laughs> that would have been twenty. Oh, was it eighteen? I don't think it was. I think it was eighteen. So, do you want to tell that story? Yeah, I don't mind. Because. Um, basically, the running joke from twenty sixteen was the fact that I used to fuck off to Derby for like half a day on like the Thursday. Yeah. So I left to go to Derby on the Thursday in 2018 because that's what I do for half a day to get... You went with, quite, you went with um, Dylan. Dylan and his girlfriend, Rebecca. Again, too many Beckers on this podcast. Dan. Went. Dan, yeah. And me we, and Terry stayed behind. You and Terry stayed behind and that's the important bit. And uh, well, me, Dylan, Rebecca and everyone, we just sort of went and had a lovely time, had a look around Derby, got Starbucks, had some food, it was lovely. And then I got a text from you and Terry and I just oh knew God. something was going down because I got a text saying, can yes. you bring a Sharpie? <laughs> can you buy us Sharpies? And I was like, I don't want to know what this is for, but I feel like I need to buy Sharpies. So I did. And then, so how, what were you guys up to at this point? Um, the weather wasn't that good that day, was it? No, I remember it being um, a little bit overcast. I remember it being overcast. overcasty and we were, I bought that toffee vodka. Mm-hmm. And we were just drinking that, and we were sat in the tent, and we were we were just like, oh, it'd be quite funny to see how many people we can get to sign us. Mm. So that's so I did a contest. Sign us how? What were we talking signing? Because you gotta. You... We were we were topless, and we we were gonna get topless that night, and like in other words, we were gonna walk around with no clothes, no top on. Um, so we wanted some sharpies. So you put us the sharpies, and um, it was later that night, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we were just walking around the village, and obviously I managed to hide what I was, what I had with my hair. And, um... We knew Ter- Terry was not so... Terry, like, so, Terry was so, fast. She so, got him out. <laughs> for, for, forgive me, uh, Becca, but, um... You are sort of a lot more, um... You had a lot more elegance about you. You had your hair extensions in. You could cover yourself up a little bit more. Terry was not. Full she, tits out. Oh, just... And Terry is not a small girl either she, in that she, department. She's she just, packing. just She's packing and she's just there. Just all the while. And walking around with you two pissed as farts with your tits out was the fucking weirdest <laughs> yet funniest experience because like and i get it you don't intend to see tits at a festival like that so some and i can only i don't know i, I want to try and excuse the behavior of some men at festivals I would. but some people were like oh nice tits love and it's like well, the funniest bit uh, was when we tried to get an ice cream for free off the ice cream man, and he wouldn't. That was that was pretty <laughs> peak. That you tried to get a free ice cream. We both tried to get free ice cream, and um, we were like, "We'll let you touch him." I like, mean, we just wanted this ice cream because I weren't we weren't paying a fiver for an ice cream like, and he wouldn't even give us the flake. Not the cornetto that the ice cream went in. I mean, you you should have asked for a sixty nine. <laughs> Um, or yeah, that was funny, and I'm pretty sure that was the same year. Still, it was the year still Panther played that me and Terry both threw our bras and completely forgot there was a child in front of us. I mean, there is there's been some crazy, crazy. I sh- thought I've nearly killed Terry before now. When yeah, she so having heart palpitations. That was 2018. So uh, it must have all happened. In it was 2018. during it was during Marilyn Manson. I want to say because no, it was the headline. Um, who when it was who it was the band before Aeros- Aerosmith. Smith. Band before Aerosmith. Um, Rob Zombie. Was Jamie playing. pull that up as as Joe Rogan says. Just keep talking. I'm just going to search um, it up. And I thought I killed her, and that was quite interesting 
Yeah, so she was complaining that she had like she was complaining that she was having heart palpitations, and it was like, oh shit, this is no longer funny. Like we're actually going to kill our friend. Maybe we've got a problem. I don't want. Why? Why are you on truck simulator? My my PC. Are we just are we dyslexic today then? Yeah. Yeah, we are. My my computer's being a download uh, lineup twenty eight twenty eighteen twenty eighteen. Have you even done a podcast before? Have you ever done this before, mate? Uh, so it would have been. No, it wouldn't have been. It's 2017. Oh, that's why I put the first time. 2017. There we go. So it would have been <laughs> Alter Bridge. Yeah, so it was doing Alter Fridge. Yeah, so the running joke with the Alter Fridge is uh, we had a group chat when t- that they played and it was no longer Alter Bridge. It was Alter Fridge for some reason. But no, that was, that was like, this is no longer funny, the amount we've drunk. Yeah, we, we've, had some, we've had some funny times, me and you. We've had, yeah. We, we've, like, done, we've, we've done a lot together. We have done a lot together. So the only thing we haven't done is slept together, obviously, for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. Um, because I have a girlfriend you, and you're you. very much uh, you're very much unavailable emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to get blood out of a stone. <laughs> do we talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> we can do. Um, there was this lad, uh, and I was 20, Jesus fucking Christ, that must have been 2017 as well. Yeah, 2017. So we camped, 2017, we camped, we camped, camped next to a group of boys oh, from, oh, were they from Brighton? Somewhere like that. A lovely, Somewhere down a lovely, south. A lovely group of boys. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Let, let's not lovely. get it twisted. They're a lovely group of lads, um, but they were what you would call lads. Lads. L-A-D-S's. Capital in big capital, capital letters. And, um, you know, I'm going to throw this out there on the podcast. You're a very attractive woman. I would see why a man would try to be attracted to you, and I could see you why. You look like no, Adam no. Sandler at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> She's, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyway, um, and there was a particular guy who we will call Jack for I the sake. For no, 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 no. We're not. We're not going to name him. We're, not gonna, okay. we're gonna call him Jack for the sake of the podcast. Um, and Jack came up to me after like two days of being at the festival because no, we it can't. Wasn't, it wasn't even two days. Was it not? Was it the first it night? It was like the first night. Okay, the first night of the podcast. And um, first night of the podcast, first night of the pe- festival. Fuck me, you're struggling today. Fuck me, the heat is getting to me. Um, yeah, so it's the not f- that hot. It's not that hot, exactly. The first <laughs> night of the festival, um, Jack came up to me and went, are you two like a thing, right? And I was like, oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Why? What, what's, what's the deal? And he was like, I really fancy her. I, you know, I might want to, you know, see if she's up. Yeah, up for it. Up for it. That was the kind of expression he used. I'm paraphrasing, but you get my point. So immediately I'm kind of turned off to this guy. <laughs> just I'm like, you want to just get on it, dear? Do you want to get just on my best friend? All right, cool. Nice one. And I, sorry, Rebecca's just reclining on my chair and nearly falling off it. That's hilarious. I'm trying to get into a comfortable position. Yeah, but the microphone's here. You need to... You need yeah, to... I know, but I just need to, you know, sort myself out so everyone can mind their business just for a second. Mind your business. Right, carry on. Um... So I said to Jack, and I'm not paraphrasing when I say this. I mean, fair, fair. You gotta co- give the boy credit. Gotta give the true. boy credit. Fair cop, my friend. You try and you try, but it's like getting blood out of a stone. And what I mean by that is, as far as unless you're in a relationship, you're pretty much unavailable in every sense of the word of a relationship because you're just like, no, I'm just not fucking interested. Right? Yeah. And being, be, again, tell me if you think I'm wrong, you're straight, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like, if you're just not interested, it's like, just not interested, You mate. don't tickle my fancy, or you don't float my boat. Exactly. You can, I'm you not could interested, be... you can try your fucking All right, okay, so, who, just... name me, like, a really, a celebrity you fancy, or, you like, someone famous you fancy. Just... Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne. Weird. <laughs> That's so weird. That's the first question I've Anyway, so, if Ozzy goes, hey, up, Becca. I want to take you back to a... Shut up, Sharon! Fuck off, Sharon. Do you want to come back to me house and I'll, uh, I'll binge you over tea... I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm going to binge you over tea, but watch out for Corky. I don't know why he's got this for. That's what I'm going to go with it. And you're emotionally unavailable. Would you let him? I'll drop my knickers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be ready to go. <laughs> what is this podcast? Anyway, the point I'm making is Becca was just like, nah, don't want to don't play ball. And anyway, this guy... He tried. <laughs> right, I'm not calling Jack out for being a perv or anything like that because it was all above board. It was all banter. It was, was, it was, it was you were fine. I was fully aware. <laughs> you were fully aware of what was going on. It was not like anything um, 
predatory no, no. in the sense. It was just lads being lads. It was just lads and lads doing what lads do, I suppose. But it was funny watching him try and I mean, flirt give, his way give, through to your inner barrier. Boy, but... Give the boy credit when it's due. But he tried and he failed miserably. If it was a game, he would have failed. I just want to get your general vibe and opinions on download just passed. Because we're already talking about download. Right. So... Obviously, this will help listeners if you get the download poster in front of you, but how do you feel about that as a poster? They've all played before. Interesting. So this is... We kind of have a similar point on this, because you've been to download, like... I've... Te- yeah. I've been to download, for Jesus Christ, a long time. Yeah. Like, pretty much since its, since its inception with your dad and I done, various things. I done... I'll work it out. I'll come back. I'll yeah. That's fair, but that's they've fair. they've played a few times. I've they've they've all played a few times. I've seen Kiss. So I've seen Kiss a few times. I am Maiden a few times. Bluey Cairo was the first time I saw them. Was at download, mm-hmm. um, and they were really good. So that's. Yeah, like, we're 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 like, we're, we're, all, we're, Iron, all, we're all we're all here for Biffy. So like if you look at Iron Maiden, years. it's the same as what we saw a couple of years back. Well, it's not because the Legacy of the Beast tour. Is was then billed as being um, their like kind of here's our B side collection of all of our singles we never play normally. So it's kind of a cool thing for an Iron Maiden fan. But but yeah, what are your thoughts on the potential for twenty twenty three? The extra day. The extra day, but also the rumor that's going around that Metallica are playing two sets, two different sets at the festival. There will be, you know, and again, this is Speculation Hill, Slipknot coming back on a new record because they'll have the record coming out there, either there, around, or about. Um, and then obviously having another headliner enter, someone like uh, Bring Me the Horizon, Parkway Drive, Architects, Ghost, you name it. Insert rather large band here that haven't played before. How do you feel just about that as a suggestion? I think it'd be good. Mm. But, um, I, in a way, oh, it's, how can I word it? Um, it'll be good, like, I'm not saying it won't be, but I also feel like they're still playing it safe, though. Like, they're still playing it yeah. safe, they're still getting the same bands there. You know, like, I've seen, like, you know with Download, like, they're going to have the same headlines every three years. So importantly, based on last year, 2022, if they have a, and again, this is so speculative, if they have a similar level of lineup, level of bands, whatever, like they normally do, you know the kind of bands they book, £310, you wouldn't pay it straight away. So Wouldn't even put it on my clear pay. (laughs) Or my credit card. So what, what, in your opinion, would make someone like... And again, this isn't this isn't comparison of the festivals because whatever, this is just our opinion. If you have a differing opinion, fine, not a problem. Um, but Bloodstock, for example, yeah, which we are very, very, very happy and grateful to be uh, going. going and given uh, tickets for free, basically through uh, various means for press for this podcast, which is very exciting. Um, shout out Peter for being a fucking hero. Um, yeah. 160 quid, I think it is, for Bloodstock. I think Bloodstock is a lot better than Download. Yeah, um, so our, our first Bloodstock was 2017 as well, wasn't it? Yeah, because we done... Yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Because you... you <laughs> do you want to tell the Amon Math story? Right, okay, I missed... So we're, so we're going back to... We're going twen- back to Download. Going Download 2016, just 2016. for clarity. I missed them on a Math because everyone's a wet sack and wanted to pack up their shit so they could go home early, like, after the last band on a Sunday. And I was like, I don't mind helping them take their stuff back to the car. But I missed fucking a Math. And, yeah. and I was really salty about it. And I, I did have a little strop, but not as bad as Matt's, but he just tent leaked. Um... And then, so we had to go to Bloodstock in 2017 so I can see him in a month. But you know what? You know what? I am really fucking thankful because I will, you know, and I don't I don't get paid for these opinions. These opinions are my own. Da- download versus Bloodstock, in my opinion, for me personally, in terms of the bands they book, is night and day. 
Yeah. Like, but also the actual quality of the festival. I think the quality of Bloodstock's a lot better than Download. There is an argument to be said that Download is, you know, anything from 60 to 100,000 people every yeah. year. Whereas Bloodstock is nearer 20. Yeah. 25. Whatever it may be nowadays. Um, but I think it's that level of detail that comes with Bloodstock being... And again, same with Arc Tangent. Same with 2000 Trees. Uh, Damnation Festival. Um... Uh, Stone Dead Festival, Rock in the Bowl as well. All these like underground, smaller, smaller um, festivals. Their level of detail in terms of looking after the fans is so much more than your your download than your Reading Elites because they're built by massive companies, Live Nation and all the rest of it. Um, so yes, they've got the pulling power to book Guns and Roses, Metallica, ACDC, whoever big name you want to throw out there. But also, I think the actual fan service you receive isn't as high a quality, you know? Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean. Like, I do think the one thing with Download is it does have a lot of history behind it. It does have a lot of history. It does have a lot of history behind it. And like, a lot, like it wasn't just Download, it was Monsters of Rock before it become Download and stuff like that. And it holds a lot of sentimental value to people. Like, I've got sentimental like memories that I won't forget at download. Yeah, me too. Like, don't get me wrong. People always think that I shit on download for the sake of it. I literally have the download dog tattooed on my arm with 2016 yeah. above it because it was my first ever festival I went to and I read about, um, you know, downloading the pages of Kerrang and Metal Hammer and whatever else. But it was a case of, again, in those same magazines, I would see a poster for Bloodstock. Yeah. And Bloodstock, just the thought of a all-inclusive metal and that was the point metal, metal festival. festival it was like oh shit that's that's all long bearded dudes and fucking you yeah. know viking drinking horns and all that shit like, which nothing wrong with but that was my perception that's and then you see it. And, and then you go and it's like it's completely different it's isn't it women families Kids. children like just having <laughs> the best fucking time and it's yeah. like it's, again, unparalleled in my opinion. That's why it's the best festival in the UK. I, I, Download will always be my favourite rock festival. Yeah. Um, like, I've got some sentimental memories. I get Oh, like, God, yeah, 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 like, for sure. You know, and it's something I get to... And it's something, like... I So, say... So, like, 11 years worth of memories before mm -hmm. I stopped going. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of memories. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's a lot of memories. Like, and I was really lucky. Like, I got to do it with my friends for a long time mm -hmm. as well. But Bloodstock now is probably my favourite festival. At the minute, as it starts. I, I, think, I think those who have been to Bloodstock will say that Bloodstock is so... I mean, I mean I'm going to say this as well. Like, I am not in the greatest of physical health like ever <laughs> period i mean like there was a particular time 2021 especially for like download pilot and blood stuff i just physically couldn't do it with rank so i managed to drop like seven stone in weight and again i don't like going on about it because whatever but like even for a healthy person you're a healthy person I'm a right healthy person, you're a healthy person and it's down, a fucking down, endurance down, test download doing download. fucks me every yeah. fucking time and Fucks not not me. just through the bank card either. No, no, like <laughs> you, like the week before download, it, you're having to like mentally prepare yourself for that walk, and you're like, I'm about to do ten thousand steps in not even a day. Yeah. And it's it's draining, and it's especially draining when you don't have to take like I've never taken all my stuff in one hit. I'm like a two three trip person. Absolutely, and the and the, the other thing I just want to call reference back to the start of the podcast, we talk about our friend Johnny. Shout out Johnny from 2016, who took everything but the fucking kitchen, everything, everything but the kitchen sink. And <laughs> I'm sorry, Johnny, if you're listening to this, but like we love you. And there's we, there's always that one cunt with a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> that one, a fucking music. That festival. made it though. Like he bought everything but the kitchen sink and the guitar. Um, and I remember walking over the hill, uh, over the over the hill, sorry, over the bridge uh, to get from the south car park into like obviously Donington. And he had, like, so much stuff on the trolley. And the trolley just fell to bits. And it was like, fuck me sideways. Like, it was just... Oh, it's just me oh, and mate. Dylan were fine, though. We, was, we had all our stuff. We were under a tree. I'll be completely honest. I'm so envious of you at festivals. Because you just manage to just do it. 
with no fucking problem, right? You turn up with a tent, a sleeping bag, and clothes, a fucking pack of beer, and you're done. And I'm like, I don't turn up with much more than that. But yet I seem to have, like, a, a fucking horrible experience for the most part. I, and I mean that from, like, a getting there, setting up experience I, I, rather than the festival. That's trial and error, believe me. Trial and error. But no, like, I've learned, like, get yourself a decent camping bag. Hook your tent on mm. to your camping bag. So, you know, you've got the straps. Mm. So before you fasten your camping bag, you thread your chair, your yeah. tent, and your sleeping bag all through that. Because obviously they come with like handles or whatever, didn't they? Yeah. And then you clip it on. You've got to carry shit. Like, yeah, right, it might bang in the back of your legs. Yeah. But. Sorry, right, you, you, you carry you, on. I'm just you're, Googling something. You're, you're carrying it. And yeah. you've, got, you've got your hands free, you know. And so, yeah. And, but I'll never forget like the first year you come. Like, I remember seeing the little smile on your face. Literally, every time I go over that downward hill, like it's... the first time, like obviously, because like, you've told me before we were going, like you're so excited, like and stuff like that, and I got to see your face, and I've said it to you before, like that was your first festival, like you told me that, like you spoke about you wanted to go, like you were watching it in Kerrang on Kerrang and you know stuff like that, and then I finally got to see you actually do download, yeah, like yeah. something something in a way that I took for granted, yeah, I go, I went every year. And then I got to see my friends do it. And that's where the sentimental thing comes from. Like, I get to see my friends, like you, my best friend, experience his first festival, the one he dreamt to go when he was 13. Yeah. And stuff like that. So that's it's why download will always have like a little, little bit of my heart, I suppose. Absolutely. And the other thing is, say, so we are going to sort of cap off the festival talk because I've just had an idea live on the podcast. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go to like a slight break. We're going to go for a fag break, basically. We're going to go, well, I'm not. Rebecca's going for a fag break, but you're going to, you're not going to like worry about that because you're going to be, yeah. <laughs> 